Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for checking it out. In today's video, I'm gonna take you through a little bit about turbo selection and why one of these big old S480 turbos may not be the right turbo for your LS swap application. So I will take you through essentially the old setup I used to have on my Camaro, which was a 7875 on a six liter versus this setup on the Mustang, which is an S480 on a six liter. Now, full disclosure here, this is not meant to be a clickbaity video, and it's not meant to bash this particular option. Uh, every, every person has obviously different preferences on how the car schools and how it drives on the street. And my experience with my Camaro essentially led me to this turbo, because as you can see, this kind of looks like a street car. It's definitely more of a track geared car, right? We have a roll cage in here, we have a sump fuel tank, of all the safety stuff to go really fast. And that's the purpose of this car is high RPM, lots of power, you know, going through the traps at 7,000 RPM, 150 miles an hour. That's the goal with this car. And that's part of why it doesn't make this, this you know, for this turbo, if it, can, if it can achieve those kind of trap speeds and high RPMs, hopefully fingers crossed, it takes away from a lot of the fun streetcar stuff like super quick spool and blasting tires at 3000 RPM. So for starters, what are the things that make this turbo not as fun or as good in the street as the other setup I had, the 7875? Well, first off, this thing does not spool the same. So I'm finding in this particular combination, this car isn't starting to make boost until 3000 RPM. Now there's gonna be people on here who comment, say, oh, you don't know what you're doing, your tune is wrong or this or that. We're, we're, pretty, we're pretty confident in the tune. Obviously the car hasn't been on a dyno yet, but I know that, you know, I, I, I just know that how this turbo is spooling is how this turbo is gonna spool. So two things on this car that would definitely help it spool better. Uh, though I do have a five inch downpipe, it converts to a single three inch way down there and runs through a full exhaust. Now, that is not a problem for me because I made another pipe that with two bolts, I put on and shoots out the fender for track use, but I'm obviously not gonna drive around town with that. One other thing that does not help the spool time is the rear gear in this car. That's a 410 gear, and this diff back here that I'm putting together right now, that's gonna have three five fives, and it's just got a bunch of other upgrades in it. But that rear gear makes a big difference on spool time. So, I mean, here's something you can think of. Go take your car for a drive and tell me at 3000 RPM if you would just wanna start seeing boost there or if you might wanna start seeing boost way lower down in the RPM range. So if you don't like the, the high RPM boost stuff, then this is definitely not the right turbo for you and you'd be much better suited to something like a 7875. So if this turbo is, is uh, you know so mediocre on the street compared to my other car, then why would I even put it in here? Well, the answer comes down to back pressure and horsepower capability. So with my Camaro at 640 wheel, I was running into back pressure issues. How do I know I was running into back pressure issues? Because I could look at my data logs and I could see that at very high RPM, you know, over 6,000 RPM, my engine was actually starting to use less fuel. What does that have to do with it? Well, it means that there's so much, the back pressure essentially means that there is so much pressure in the exhaust feeding into the small little turbine housing that when the valves overlap between the intake and exhaust valve, the exhaust gas actually comes back up and into the chamber and into the intake valve, and the engine is now putting in burnt air uh, with no oxygen. So less oxygen, the computer just automatically knows, looking at the O2 sensor, okay, we need less fuel. So essentially what's happening is there's less fuel to burn when you have high back pressure. And the more fuel you can burn, the more power you're gonna make at a given you know, AFR. So on the power topic again, what else have I seen? Well, I've seen that this particular turbo 
at six PSI is already using 388 pounds an hour of fuel versus my Camaro at 16 uh, PSI was using about 415 or so. <clears throat> so essentially what that means is this turbo is providing so much air to the engine that its total fuel usage is already getting close to what my Camaro was making at max boost. And I don't even have the boost controller turned on in this car yet. So where's this setup going to shine? Well, this setup's going to shine at the track. I want this car to be able to go through the traps at, you know, high 6,000s, maybe 6,700 RPM, 150 miles an hour, and I think it'll be able to do it. To do that, I'm probably going to require something like 800 wheel horsepower, which I'm hoping to do on E85. Now, where would the smaller turbo setup benefit you? Well, the smaller turbo setup would definitely benefit you if you're looking for something like 600 wheel horsepower. And a big question I think that a lot of people out there have to ask themselves when they're doing these Turbo LS builds is what's the fastest car you've ever driven? Have you ever driven a car with 500 wheel? If you've only ever driven something with like 300 wheel, you hop in a car with five or 600 wheel and you're gonna feel sick. It's gonna feel so fast to you. However, in my case, I've been driving around a car with 640 wheel for the last like three or four years. So I knew that to, for this to be the track car I want, I want something more like 800 plus wheel. That's why I went with the big turbo. So there's obviously a lot of things that you should consider on if you want the big T6 housing turbo versus a smaller T4 housing turbo. And there's also a lot of options that are right in the middle. But I'll tell you one other thing that makes this turbo uh, really difficult uh, to install, especially if, if you're new to the fabrication thing or God forbid you're paying someone to do it for you, is just the size of it. Like to package this in this car and, and get your AC and everything, I had to make custom headers, I had to make a custom crossover pipe. This stuff is all hand fabricated custom stuff, which I'm not complaining about because I love doing it. And it's actually the reason I did it because I enjoy it so much. But if you just want, you know, something easier, that's still going to be super fast, this probably isn't the right option for you. So there's obviously the mid ground argument, why don't you get something in between? And the answer to that would definitely be something like uh, the Gen 3 VS Racing 7875. I think it's got like a 1.2 AR or so on it. So that's an awesome option because it's going to spool better than this turbo. It's still going to make a lot of power. So in my particular case, if I'm only looking for 800 wheel, could I have used something like the VS? Totally could have. And what's the reason I didn't? Well, it's a lot more expensive than I got this turbo for. And it's also not readily available for me because I live in Canada. And ultimately, this turbo is probably only gonna stay on this car for one season anyways, because I wanna move into something like limited class racing, hopefully next year. So really, I'm kind of just <clears throat> playing around uh, with this particular turbo. And I know that I can take this off, I can put on uh, appropriate limited class turbo next year. I don't have to refabricate all this stuff. So I didn't wanna make another T4 hot side and then have to switch it all to T6 stuff, T6 stuff again next year. So that's part of the reason why I have this on here. So ultimately guys, I hope I've provided you, uh, you know, with some good information on essentially why you may not want a big turbo like this. You know, a lot of people just look on the internet and they see, oh, I could make 500. Then they see, oh, I could make 600. I could make 700. Oh, I could make 800. Tons of people making a thousand. But what you really need to ask yourself is what is your budget and what are your goals? And what's the fastest car I've driven? Because those are the things that are really gonna help contribute uh, to the success of the car. Now, one more thing I will add that's somewhat related to this conversation uh, is your fuel system. So my Camaro had just a really simple fuel system. I had DECA 80s, they're cheap, they're a few hundred bucks. I had a Walboro 450 pump. That's another couple hundred bucks, super cheap fuel system, okay? This car's got Bosch 210s, those are like 750 bucks Canadian. Uh, it's got a Magnafuel 4303, another 750 bucks Canadian. So the cost of the fuel system <clears throat> to make that extra couple hundred horsepower on this car is very substantial. So uh, it may be another reason why you think to yourself, okay, well, you know what? Maybe I'm just gonna go with something smaller like the 7875 because I don't wanna spend an extra $1,500 on fuel system stuff. 
So to wrap this video up, guys, I'm not trying to say that this turbo is undesirable or it's not good, but I just hope that this video will open the eyes to some of the newer people in the Turbo LS community and realize that, hey, you know what? Maybe I don't want this giant turbo. It looks freaking awesome. It sounds cool. It does all kinds of cool stuff, but really, you know, driving this car around and driving the Camaro around, I would say the Camaro in some senses felt faster and this car in some senses feels faster. Obviously when this car is turned up, it's gonna be a complete animal and it's gonna be light years faster than the other car. But the big things to consider, like response time, how fast the turbo spools up, completely different between the two cars. I'm sure there's gonna to be tons of comments on here about you know people saying that there's something wrong with the setup, you know, or I've got a bad tune or or whatever it may be. But you know, this is just an this is just an opinion piece for you guys. And you know, I really want you to consider uh, why this probably isn't a good option for your street car. And if I ever built this to be a straight up street car, it would get the simple don't BS me combo that I used to have, 7875, Deca 80s, Walboro 450 pump, go out there, make 600 wheel, blow tires off, you know, at any speed and probably still be able to, you know, get a 10 second, 10 something pass at the track. So thanks for spending some time with me this afternoon. Appreciate you guys checking out the video and all of your continued support. And uh, yeah, we'll see you on the next one.